Okay. So now I'm uh, really going backwards to the deepest uh, building block, if you want, in the chain of uh, hierarchies we, we, we've just uh, seen or we just heard about. Uh, and uh, uh, one of these is quantum espresso, that is uh, actually the quantum engine we are going to use throughout this uh, uh, workshop. And uh, uh, very simply, so Quantum Espresso is an integrated suite of open source computed code for electronic structure uh, aimed at materials modeling at the nanoscale, and uh, it is mostly based on density functional theory, plane waves, uh, and uh, uh, pseudopotentials. Uh, Quantum Espresso project actually comes uh, and involves a large uh, community of uh, uh, developers and contribution uh, contributors uh, and also users from all around the world. Here is a map of the geographical distribution of uh, uh, cycling papers, and you see that this is quite widespread and somehow reflects also the interest and the geographical distribution of attendees to this uh, uh, workshop itself. Here is uh, another geographical map concerning downloads. Uh, so uh, of the order of 10,000 downloads is what uh, you get for every release of the code. Then here uh, we see that these are quantum uh, is mostly downloaded in Europe, US, uh, India, and, uh, uh, and China. And uh, coming uh, closer actually to the, to the core of what the, uh, to the science also of what the uh, quantum, of quantum, what quantum espresso does. Uh, here we can look at the uh, EWSCF. Uh, program that just solves uh, the Konecham equation and computes the electronic structure of molecules and materials, again, at the uh, level of density functional theory. Here are the uh, Konecham equations that are solved and, uh, by saying that we use a plane wave and pseudopotential uh, approach. Basically, we are uh, meaning that uh, wave functions are actually expanded using a plane wave basis set and that the interaction between electrons and ions is described by means of uh, pseudopotentials. Here are some uh, references uh, where the method is uh, uh, described. Okay, uh, software-wise, in terms of uh, um, software engineering, the uh, Quantum Espresso is built of several uh, software layers. The one we are uh, really interested in is the upper layer, the one that implements the science. And uh, I've already introduced PWSCF that uh, basically solves uh, the Konecham equations. We also have other engines like Carparinello. And uh, also uh, quite important actually for this tutorial is the, uh, are the linear response capabilities of quantum espresso. And all of these basically sit on top of uh, uh, lower uh, layers that are, uh, if you want more technical layers, solving specific uh, um, mathematical problems or um, computing kernels and eventually closer to the computing hardware. But uh, as I said here uh, in this audience and context, we are actually more interested in the uh, top layer. And for the sake of this tutorial here, we are focusing on the DFT plus U capabilities uh, or we are focusing on the DFT plus U method that is implemented in quantum espresso. So there's a DFT plus U capability of quantum espresso and also the capabilities to compute Koopman's functions. So for what concerns DFT plus U, uh, we will uh, make use of the PW.x or the PWSCF code. Also, HP is this linear response. Uh, code that will allow to compute uh, uh, you from uh, uh, linear response theory. And also we'll see um, tomorrow, I think, uh, some applications of the T plus U to the uh, calculation of phonons by means of pH.x. For what concerns Koopmans, again, there's a uh, plethora of codes that are used. Uh, there's a modified uh, version of the Carparinello code, KCP, and uh, uh, and also KCW that uh, exploits Vanier functions. So there's an interface with Vanier 90 and so on. So these are all the tools that we are going to use and see in the next uh, uh, days. 
Here, I, I want to switch uh, gear a bit uh, by focusing on, a, on an aspect that is uh, more specific, that is the interaction of quantum express with the HPC, so the um, high performance computing environment. And uh, quantum express is basically part, is one of the codes supported by the MAX initiative. MAX stands for materials designed at the exascale. And so here you can already see the keywords uh, are basically uh, exascale uh, and uh, uh, performance computing um, uh, capabilities. One important point that is again context is that uh, uh, exascale is basically happening now. So uh, in the past few months, uh, we already have witnessed the deployment of uh, the first uh, exaflop capable machine that is Frontier at Oak Ridge in the, in the US and also uh, we already have two out of three pre exascale machines deployed in Europe, Leonardo and uh, Lumi. And if you look at these numbers, just to give the an idea, uh, the pre exascale machines are capable of a quarter and a half of an exaflop and uh, Frontier is one exaflop. So current uh, uh, large scale machines in Europe are of the order of a few tens Petaflop. So it's really a, a one order of magnitude leap uh, forward in terms of compute capabilities. And this is somehow good news for electronic structure practitioner. At the same time, this comes with a lot of uh, uh, abrupt technology changes. Uh, and uh, the bad news is that uh, this calls for uh, uh, a lot of work in the code to be able to exploit these resources. So somehow action on the codes is needed, otherwise you simply won't be able to run on this machine. So the, the computing power will be there, but you won't be able to uh, take care of it. I'll, I'll skip about the technical challenges uh, here, but somehow this is a uh, uh, max role that is uh, taking these codes and quantum express in particular to be able to exploit these HPC uh, machines. and. Uh, Globally speaking, basically, ab initio materials modeling is based on uh, electronic structure, quantum mechanical uh, atomistic description of the systems uh, is uh, uh, a good candidate uh, to exploit uh, this computing power because it's highly accurate and predictive. I think we've seen very nice uh, examples in the talks uh, uh, before. It's also on the other side, the computationally demanding as compared to other uh, kind of uh, uh, calculation. So it's really a, a, a case here. An exascale really comes as a, a, an opportunity and uh, an opportunity for what? Surely we can think of uh, uh, casting uh, more complexity, more detail into the modeling we do of our uh, system. So um, uh, if we know, for instance, that our system has some specific corrugation, uh, we can actually uh, think of describing it uh, uh, out of the box without uh, uh, needing some uh, extra modeling. At the same time, another uh, vertex of this triangle is that uh, uh, we can think of uh, climbing some uh, uh, accuracy hierarchy. And probably this is very uh, close to the core of this workshop. So we uh, can think of using methods that are uh, more accurate that let us um, force us to pay more, but at the same time provides us with more accurate uh, answers. And also being able to compute quantities that are more involved. And uh, there, uh, again, the existence of uh, uh, workflows and workflow managers like AIDA is, is uh, pretty much key. And uh, eventually, there is also the opportunity to uh, make this computations uh, automatic and uh, uh, to be able to perform high throughput uh, uh, screen. Again, automation is something that doesn't come for free and uh, we've already heard uh, about uh, this in the context of the, of, uh, the previous talks. Um, important, uh, large part of what uh, Max does in this context is really to take care of the GPU porting because uh, uh, for high-end machines, so let's say uh, tier zero large scale machines, this is the de facto standard for today. And uh, uh, that is going to, to stay also 
for um, five years time, we'll also will still have uh, uh, GPUs according to today's uh, forecast. So this is really key to what uh, Max does. So now uh, uh, let me put all of this together. So what Max does, here are the Max flagship codes that are uh, uh, currently supported and Max works on widely used open source uh, uh, community codes in electronic structure, uh, porting and uh, uh, to GPUs and parallel performance is one of the key uh, bits of Max actions. And um, uh, a piece of good news is that all these codes have been actually uh, released in production ready on uh, with GPU support. So we are uh, actually uh, there to uh, exploit these machines. And also something that could be of interest is that large effort is spent on education and training. And uh, there is a lot of uh, training material available at different uh, uh, levels. Let me just now uh, conclude with uh, something more uh, of a vision. So we have more uh, uh, compute power. And if you want, if we are sitting here uh, at the DFT level, uh, we know for sure that there's uh, a number of hierarchies of uh, method that could be climbed to uh, improve or to uh, enlarge our uh, capabilities as electronic structure uh, practitioners. Uh, and along this workshop, I think uh, we are pretty much interested in this uh, uh, spectral hierarchy, especially with the Koopman's uh, uh, function, so extending the FT capabilities towards uh, uh, spectral uh, quantities. And in general, I think is is uh, uh, quite an interesting question to ask ourselves is, uh, uh, with these new machines and new compute capabilities that come, uh, uh, I would say as a boundary condition, and then, uh, uh, so what is the best way to uh, exploit them also uh, method wise so not not all methods uh, are identically suited for these new machines so here i think there's really room for our uh, community of uh, method developers to um, understand uh, and uh, which methods are best and to develop new methods best to uh, cope with these uh, uh, new machines and with this let me uh, uh, thank you for uh, the attention